So I get asked quite a bit, what's the difference between PRP stem cells and B cells? So PRP comes from the patient's body and essentially we are harvesting the healing proteins and the growth factors that are carried by the platelets in the blood. So by extracting uh, this component of the blood, we take those uh, proteins out, concentrate them and put them in the area that we want to elicit accelerated healing. So we're using the patient's stuff and using the natural processes of healing and manipulating those to try to cause an accelerated effect. Those have some limitations because one, what we're extracting comes from the same body that the disease process might have been. So if we're trying to help somebody that has any chronic disease like um, autoimmunity or diabetes or cardiovascular disease or even cancer, it does pose some limiting um, quality in the uh, proteins that we can extract. Stem cells. Stem cells, um, by definition, are your base uh, backup cells that are in the different organs to regenerate the damaged cells or the damaged tissue from that organ. So in the ideal world, if we can feed our natural stem cells, then our organs and our skin and everything else can regenerate and keep us younger. As we start losing uh, strength in stem cells, that's when we start the aging process. So they started investigating using foreign stem cells, for example, coming from a fetus or an embryo and uh, eventually the placenta or a patient's own stem cell. So they take out stem cells, for example, from fat and use it in the same way as the uh, platelet-rich plasma is used. However, it does pose the same uh, limitations as the plasma that I just described. Um, and at the same time, because it's an older stem cell, um, it takes a lot more energy and it's not cost effective to reproduce in the lab. It's very costly. So then foreign stem cells, meaning they're not part of the patient's body, they started experimenting with embryologic stem cells or embryologic tissue. However, besides the ethical component, okay, they realized one, there is a host versus graft reaction and they are so um, total potential that they actually create cancer. So they abandoned that quite um, fast. So, and they moved into the next best thing to the baby that would be the placenta. By the natural uh, physiology of the placenta, the placenta is the buffer between the mother and the baby. So it does not elicit the signature proteins in the uh, cell surface that will identify an, uh, for an object. So it can very easily bypass <clears throat> the receiver's immune system and do what it needs to do. Because it's not the patient's DNA, they will not last in the body forever. That's a question that I get asked quite a bit. They will uh, last X amount of time, depending on where they're deposited, and then do some benefit, um, kind of change the course of the disease process, and then just die off. So they will not be incorporated into the host's DNA, all right? Um, the way the stem cells um, work is by three mechanisms. It's paracrine, meaning going next to the damaged cell and excreting some proteins and some signals such that cell heals and not dies. Two, uh, by direct immune modulation, meaning calming down the immune system not to create a subclinical autoimmune reaction. And, and three, by reprogramming the cells, by actually communicating cell to cell and kind of giving new sets of instructions to a cell that has lost how to function, okay? Um, I get asked quite a bit in terms of where does this uh, stem cells, this donated stem cells come from? They usually are donated placentas um, that come from young uh, women, healthy, fully screened women <clears throat> that um, ended in a healthy full-term pregnancy, okay? Um, and then what are the B cells? That is kind of the newer technology. Um, it's it's been around maybe for the last five to 10 years. It was first discovered in some marine mammals and eventually was discovered in humans as well. They are our backup stem cells. <clears throat> the beauty of the, stem, of the B cells, that means very small embryologic life cells, is that one, they are inside your body, so they're yours. Two, they seem to be dormant from, the, from infancy 
Um, therefore, they will have potentially zero age, right? Um, they get activated on severe crises, heart attack, accidents, things of the sort where the base stem cell of that organ cannot meet the demands of the crisis at hand. However, scientists have discovered how to activate this um, very, very small stem cells that run around in your body. So we are able to harvest them, activate them, and then use them in the same way as the PRP or the exogenous stem cells are being used by eliciting the same processes of accelerated healing. And at the same time, there could be the potential of those stem cells becoming uh, part of that tissue because it is the same DNA and they seem to be total potential without the tumor forming factor. So I hope this was somewhat helpful. You're always welcome to reach out to me and uh, we can discuss this uh, further.